All right, we are getting ready to process those blueberries that I spent three hours picking the other day. I'm so excited, they look fantastic. I got I'm gonna be making a blueberry compote, a blueberry chutney to go along with the fabulous blueberry crisp that right. I've already made. So I am one project down from these blueberries. I have already got my eight cups of blueberries set aside for my blueberry chutney. And then I'm probably gonna do two batches of the chutney and I have still just got one bowl to wash. So this is a big project, but I am on my way and I feel so good about this combo. I've got one thing done, <laughs> yay. All right, I have got all of my eight cups of blueberries in my pan here. The next thing I am going to do is I'm gonna add one cup of chopped onion. Now this is three-fourths cup of sweetener. I've done one half cup of maple syrup and one fourth cup of honey. I have one and one half cup of apple cider vinegar plus one fourth cup of balsamic vinegar here. Now I've got, this was one cup of raisins, but I rehydrated them for 10 minutes in water and then just gave them kind of a coarse chopping. Here is one large garlic clove minced. Got a tablespoon of some grated ginger, fresh, or you could use one and one half tablespoons of dry ginger. Have the zest of one lemon. And the juice of a lemon. Got two teaspoons ground mustard. One and a half teaspoons of salt, which of course I'm eyeballing about a little more than a teaspoon of red pepper flakes, half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, half a teaspoon ground black pepper. Now we just stir all these together really well. We're gonna bring it to a boil. It'll boil like that for about an hour until it gets to the consistency that we like. And then we're just gonna can it up now that it's up to a nice rolling boil, we're just going to reduce the heat and then just let it simmer. And again, it'll be for like an hour. So it is definitely a little patience to wait until this is done. But at the same time, other than stirring it occasionally, it's pretty hands off. So the chutney is coming along really well and it is just starting to thicken up. It has about another half an hour to go ahead and reduce. And then I have already been preparing my canning jars. So I've got my canning jars already in the sterilizer and I'm canning pints, I'm sorry, half pints today. And some of them are the large wide mouth half pints and the other one are the taller, more slender half pints. Exactly the same measurement. This is looking fantastic and I did give it a taste and I decided to put a fourth of a cup of brown sugar in here because it still was a little bit tart because obviously we've got, you know, a cup and three fours of vinegar, which is exactly what we're supposed to have. But you know, the honey and the maple syrup is just not as sweet as the sugar, but still I only added one fourth cup of brown sugar. to taste with just that extra little fourth of a cup of brown sugar and it is perfect to my taste anyway. I mean, if you wanted it sweeter, you can continue adding, but that is delicious. And I can already get that nice kick from those little red chilies that we put in there, those red chili flakes. It is gonna be so amazing. I All right, we have reached an hour now and it is just to the right consistency because once this cools, it's gonna thicken up. So I don't wanna get any more evaporation. I don't want it to reduce any more or else it's gonna to be too thick. I don't want it like super duper thick. I still want it to be able to be kind of like jammy and spreadable, but, um, and not like a block, <laughs> you know, sitting in a jar. So this is gonna be perfect. My jars are just about ready. The water bath canner is just about to a boil. So we are gonna be canning for the first time. I'm gonna be canning. So the chutney is all ready to go into my jars. I've already filled one just cause I wanted to give a practice run. But anyway, I have got my canning funnel on and I'm just gonna go ahead and get this hot chutney 
right into this jar and then just leaving you know a fourth of an inch to a half an inch of headspace and I think I got it pretty well perfect that first time so we're just gonna see how this goes and then I go ahead and just get that squished around and then I might just pour in just a tiny bit more without trying to spill that's perfect so I'm just gonna go ahead fill the rest of these jars and then we are going to get canning now the jars are all ready and I'm just gonna wipe the rims down even though they're pretty clean just for the sake of caution get my lids on finger tighten them on and then we're gonna get them into this water bath but now I am going to go ahead and start getting all of these in here and it was at a rolling boil before I started filling my jars but now it's not and so we're just gonna I think it just comes right back up to a boil as soon as I get the lid back on so as I'm doing this I am just making sure that the jars are not super close together it doesn't have to be that far apart but that the jars are not super close together or touching so that they don't. All right, they are all in and there were some bubbles coming out. You can see some bubbles coming out, but I guess that that's totally normal and water's not gonna get in the jar, but just don't let them tip over. So anyway, now we put the lid on and then as soon as it comes to a boil, I'm gonna set my timer for 10 minutes and then we turn it off, let them rest for five minutes and then they are done. Now it is just really interesting to me <laughs> that these air bubbles keep on coming out of here. That is just super duper interesting. So again, it's boiled for 15 minutes and now we are almost to the five minutes of being cool. Then I take them out. We're going to set them on this mat and then they are going to, or my towel anyway, then they're going to set overnight for 12 hours at the minimum. And then we take off the canning lids and see if they can't properly so it's so exciting so now five minutes are up and I'm just going to be using my tongs with my silicone now I would not be doing this if I wasn't just using half pint jars because I absolutely think that this canning bobble would work better jar lifter Oop! did you hear that little snap that was kind of a funny little sound anyway would work better for anything that's going to be heavier and i totally get that but it is very fiddly to me that is just a super fiddly thing and so for me it's easier with this little size jars <laughs> to just go ahead and do it with my um my silicone tongs here all right, so now instead of my uh, cook sign, we're gonna have to have can, cause now Matilda cans. Anyway, we're gonna catch up with this tomorrow, check our lids, and we'll see how I did. I am day two of chutney making. So I've got the blueberry chutney that I made yesterday all put together already. But today I am also doing a strawberry chutney and I just wanted to get a picture of it even though it's already chopped up and in the pan. And there's strawberries, red onion, light brown sugar, apple cider vinegar, three fourths cup of raisins, a half a lemon juiced and zested, a tablespoon of yellow mustard seed, a tablespoon of kosher, well actually half a tablespoon or to taste of kosher salt, and two teaspoons of red pepper flakes. So the process is exactly the same as that of the blueberries here, but I am going to get these both going at the same time because they both take an hour to go ahead and process and reduce and then I'm going to be canning them up. Now the only thing that I am doing different today in my blueberry chutney is that I'm going to be putting in this cinnamon basil from my garden. My neighbor gave me this beautiful cinnamon basil and it is just coming on along so good even after the slugs were trying to kill it. Um, it came back to life and I got to pick some today and here is the lemon basil and I'm going to be putting the lemon basil in the strawberry chutney. These are reducing just perfectly. I think my strawberries, just because they are half the volume of the blueberries, are probably going to be done first, but that is okay because it'll give me a chance to get these guys uh, water bath and canned and then um, go on to the blueberries and everything will be nice, fresh, hot, and exactly as it should be. So this is one way that I love to enjoy my chutneys. I am just going to put my little bit of chicken breast with some chutney on top of it. You can enjoy it on a cracker. 
I love chutneys with cheese, and so I'm just gonna take a bite of that right there. It is so good. The sweetness, the little vinegary pop, the savoriness of it, the onions, the garlic, the cinnamon, the spices. It's so delicious, but I love it. It's kind of like, think about cranberries on turkey or, you know, something savory, but even cranberries are over sweet. You know, they're sweet, but they're tart. This isn't even that tart, but it just has that delicious sweetness, savoriness that just goes perfect with any kind of chicken or turkey or even ham. It's so delicious, and especially with cheese. This over brie is just amazing. Strawberry chutney is done, and I am moving on to the blueberry. And so now again, the last thing I'm gonna do is mix in, this one is the cinnamon basil. And I will tell you, it really elevated that strawberry chutney to a whole different thing. It, to be honest with you, almost tastes like a savory adult strawberry ketchup. It just tastes fantastic. It's like something you'd get at a super fancy restaurant or something. Love it. Ooh, those guys are popping. I don't know if you can hear it. Anyway, that's exciting. So getting ready to jar these up and they are going to go into the water bath. The timer is up on my last batch here, and we're taking them out, and we are finished for the night. And I am just so thrilled about this experience. I mean, oh my goodness. So not only have I learned how to make some chutneys that I've never made before, because I've only ever made fig chutney before this, but I also have learned to can, which is such a huge blessing. So yeah. I've got my original five chutneys that I made here, plus one in the refrigerator, really two in the refrigerator, because one of them did something weird and didn't, um, when it cooled, it was really liquidy. And these ones are like totally solid. So I don't know what went wrong with that one, but I didn't feel comfortable, um, you know, leaving it canned. I figured we'll just stick it in the fridge. I opened it, we'll stick it in the fridge and we'll eat it. And so here are the strawberry. These are still hot. So this is the strawberry chutney with the red pepper. And these are the ones that are obviously, I don't need to be touching with my hand, that I just pulled out my next blueberry ones. But these ones have the cinnamon basil in it as did the strawberry have the lemon basil. And that really elevated it. I mean, I am talking about really taking that to a whole different level, adding those herbs in there. And I'm so glad that I did so that I know the difference. So anyway, you know, if you can do anything on a small little scale like this, Eventually, I can do it on a big scale, and it's gonna be really fun to see the different things that I can preserve myself. Being a city girl, <laughs> and even growing up in the super hood on food bank food, even, you know, it is a big journey to make it to here, to canning food <laughs> myself, from uh, just eating anything out of a box and a basket. I wanna say, again, a huge thank you to my sister for lending me her water bath canner. This thing is a game changer. Not having to do all that on the stove is so huge. I mean, I don't have a huge like six burner stove in the first place and you know, just navigating both of those pots cooking tonight and then doing um, this water bath on the side made everything exponentially easier. Uh, if you're gonna can, I would recommend you get one. I don't even know how much they cost. My sister just lent this to me, but man, just even draining off the water through this spout and not having to, you know, dump this whole boiling hot water thing, even though you could totally let it cool, but I'm just saying it is so efficient and it makes things so easy. So yay on ball canning, water canning bath. It's amazing. Um, God bless you guys. Have a great night. And I hope that you try preserving your own food, no matter what you do, freeze it, you know, store it, do whatever you do. But in the days that we're living in, I encourage everybody start preserving, start setting stuff back. Even if it's a hedge against inflation, it's just wisdom now. Anyway, God bless you guys. Have a great night.